All right, Lucinia sent me this replay from his silly tournament where he did allow use of the three lords. You know that recent change where you can all of a sudden bring multiple lords in multiplayer? Not in, like, quick battles, but you could just turn that option on. Yeah, he ran a tournament where you could take them. So we have the Crows of Cain, a Supreme Sorceress of Shadows with Melkoth's Enfeebling Foe, and then Lokir Felhart on his dragon and Rakarth on his dragon. But uh, she's the true lord, so if she dies, the army loses their leadership. Four Cold One Knights, a bunch of Bleak Swords, one Dark Shard. Gotcha. You know, the other side for the High Elves, we have Spearmen, White Lions of Krace, more Spearmen, a Sister of Avalorn. Then we have Teclas, Imric, and Alistair the White Lion, also on a Star Dragon? I didn't even know he had a Dragon Mount. He's the Lion guy. I thought he just had Lions. So Teclas is going to use Net on Rakarth, lock him in place. Teclas brought Regrowth, Flock of Doom, and Net. But Lokir doesn't seem too perturbed by this. Pops straight at Duel Duelist and uh, goes to take the fight anyway. 84 and 70 for melee stats, though his Dreaded Duelist is going to wear off soon. And I imagine Imric has Lord of Dragons where he could nerf down poor Lokir here. Karth's net has worn off. He gives himself Beast Slaver. He does need to head over and help out. He does start to move now. But he is not going to do well versus Alistair and Imric. Lokir lands on the ground. He has healing slowly through the Kraken, uh, Helm of the Kraken. He has to be in melee for that, which, you know, hasn't been going great for you. But this could be a bait as Alistair and Imric both land on Lokir, but they're landing while Rakarth gets a rear charge and Cold Knights are coming in and Dark Stars are trying to shoot, though they're currently just walking towards melee because line of sight reasons. A regrowth onto Imric to try and keep him safe preemptively. And I guess it is doing its best. In the back, Crows of Cain are diving. The Sisters of Avalon are doing a lot of good damage. The front line of Bleak Swords, the Dread Spears, and the White Lions of Kreis are all fighting each other. Not too much is coming of that, but Imric's getting up in the sky. Maybe he can go chase down Lokir, who does have pot positive leadership, so if he can get some distance, he will come back. Dragonhorn is out from Imric to help Alistair a bit, but Alistair's just trying to get off the ground, which is proving difficult. Lokir is back. Lokir might want to go find some infantry to fight for a bit and just get a little bit of leadership while Imric throws a breath attack ineffectually down at the Cold of Knights, and then the Supreme Sorceress of Shadows takes an ill-advised fight against Imric. You know, on the ground, Alistair still really struggles to get away. Lo lo looks like Lokir actually just wants to take this fight. Pops all of his buffs, and yeah, Alistair's gonna route soon, so Lokir could chase him and just try and get healing from that. But we'll see. Imric and Teclas are in the skies, coming over to offer a little bit of support. On the ground, the Dark Elves seem to be doing fine, generally. The front line is losing. The Cold Knights, we have a couple that are AFK, as it seems like all of the micro is going towards the Lord Duel. But the Cold Knights could be flanking the Sisters of Avalorn or rearcharging the front lines if you had infinite micromanagement. But this is a bit of a disaster for the Dark Elves. Teclas throws out a net onto Supreme Sorceress of Shadows while Imric bodies her. And Rakarth is also committing to chasing down Alice to the White Line, as are two Cold Knights. That is way too many resources to chase off one already routing dragon. Unfortunately, the Dark Elves lose their lord in the process. Lokir is also going to peel off, leaving the chase to just Coldwind Knights. Looks like they will be up to the task. The Dark Elves now have their lord recently died debuff. Murderous Prowess is now popped, giving them more leadership. At least that'll help them get through this hard time of their lord being dead. That's kind of nice. Both sides have traded one lord apiece, but Teclas is the real lord of the High Elves here. So it is a better trade overall for the High Elves. Yeah, it's a better trade overall for the Isles. In comes the rear charges at last. Hitting the Spearman in the back while Breath Attack messes up the Dark Shards. And Rakarth looks like he's just going for it onto Amric. Beast Slaver popped out himself to give him more weapon strength, more stats, but Lord of Dragons immediately nerfs him back down to near nothingness. What will Lokir do? Might need to go help his pal Rakarth. Might. Rakarth did try landing to try and bait someone down to the Cold One Knights, but looks like the High Elves aren't having that. And Teclas just goes and gets a rear charge on Lokir instead. Lokir not ready for that fight. Big shot in from Imric, and he is immediately going to rout. Dark Elves lose their second Lord. Meanwhile, on the ground, the Cold One Knights are shifting the balance of power in the favor of the Dark Elves. On the ground, right? Overall balance power, High Elf favor, because they have two expensive Lords in the sky, but... On the ground, the Sisters are now getting killed by Cold One Knights. Cold One Knights have also run off some Spearmen. And the High Elf Infantry are looking a little worse for wear. Rakarth appears to be lining up a Breath Attack. He has three left in the tank, so I imagine these stacked High Elf troops will be his target. Yes, they are. 
and a lot of damage out. So things are getting worse for the High Elves on the ground. And in a late game, if, if Imric and Teclas have to just land into Coldwind Knights over and over again, that's not going to go great for them. Nice rear charge from the Coldwind Knights onto more Spearmen, take out all that high off support, and Imric and Teclas do have to hurry up and figure out what they're going to do. Teclas is busy chasing Lokir off the map, trying to get that guy away. There he finally kills him, so maybe Teclas and uh, and Imric can return to do some stuff, but Terra for the White Lines of Praise. I wouldn't be surprised if this one also Terra routed. So Karth dives straight through them. The Lord is dead debuff for the Dark Elf should be limited now. Yeah, it's down to minus 10 for minus 16. Just like that, everything on the ground for the High Elves is routing. Can Teclas and Imric truly carry? Uh, Imric thought about landing on those Dark Shards. Now he's going to. He's going to commit after all, but it is right in front of Golden Knights, who jump straight onto him, and Rikarth gets up into the sky just to dive back down onto Imric. There is a regrowth preemptively trying to save him. Beast, Beast Slaver again, giving Ricard that nice anti large and the extra damage. He tries to blast away at Imric. Getting some decent damage. There's no fire damage, unfortunately, to stop that regrowth from healing to full, but still, it is something. Lord of Dragons plus a net trying to hold Ricard in place, but is Imric going to opt out, or are they going to 2v1 him when he can't leave, even though they're sitting on Cold One Knights? Not like they have a lot of great options. They don't have any infantry at all, so any fight you take on the ground is going to just be mired in Cold One Knights. And I don't think Rakarth has any reason to ever take off into the sky again. As long as you force your opponents to keep landing on you, then that's a winning fight for you. Imric is trying to force path his way over to get to Rakarth, deciding I guess the only way out is to beat up on this uh, big old dragon slaver guy. Rakarth is the master of beasts. He ain't scared of nothing. And all these cold knights around with their anti-large and armor piercing can help out, though it looks like they're opting back. Oh, they're just trying to refresh their charge bonus. Understood. Regardless, will walk away, deciding he doesn't need any more of this for right now. As it's Imric and Teclas who are in a bit of trouble. Completely surrounded by angry, angry Velociraptors. Imric blows his Vuvuzela for the final time. Another regrowth for him. I felt like that just happened. That is a low cooldown for that spell. But Imric will heal cap right as Rakarth is going to breath attack on top of him. Nice solid poke damage there, lowering his melee attack with Noxious Breath. Rakarth actually is thinking about landing Beast Slaver out again. He pretty much only takes a fight when Beast Slaver is up. He's going to go for Teclas. What's that little ability there? Damage resistance and melee defense when near a large enemy. Okay, that's going to be most of the time for you. Teclas is getting bodied. Potion of Troy trying to heal him up, give him his damage resistance, make him nice and tanky. Imric is heal capped, I believe. So there's no healing left for him, even if regrowths get cast. The Cold Knights. The Cold Knights are fine. They're so mediocre at surrounding something and truly dealing damage to it, but they'll eventually get there. Eventually. Lord of Dragons down under Rakarth, but just as he's opting out, so unfortunately he will get away from the High Elves there. Teclas, if you have any Winds of Magic left, you might just want to be spamming Flock of Doom on those uh, Cold of Knights all around you, since that's the only way you're ever going to take them out. Imric's trying to break through free. Doesn't look like he'll get to the sky, so instead he's just going to charge these Cold Knights coming straight at him. I think Rakarth still has one Breath Attack left. Yeah. So you can breath attack Imric anytime now, which I would do Imric. Teclas has a lot of healing left. Imric is stuck at the HP he has. Yep, there it is. Beautiful breath attack. Good. On to Imric. Then he lands on him. Beast Slaver should be up pretty soon, judging by the cooldown it has had all game. But Rakarth gets confused, doesn't quite know how to land. There we go. You found it, big guy. Imric with Starlands popped. Does take a bunch of damage, but Beast Slaver is a little bit more powerful in this Dragon v. Dragon duel. Rakarth takes him out. Now it is just poor little Bird Teclas. Rakarth has 4,600 value. Yeah, that seems right. 2,200 for Teclas. And the Battle of the Triple Lords. Rakarth, very fittingly, dominated the Dragon fight. Lokir was a bit of a disappointment, unfortunately. 481 for him. 127 for the caster, but 4,600 for Rakarth, more than making up for their losses. Dark Shards and Cold Knights did fantastically well, and that's that. For Shiriaki, Teclas did well. Imric almost caught Rakarth on value. Almost. 
It was a lot. White Lines of Christ Experiment did okay, Sister Avalon did okay, and Alistair got killed pretty quickly, though less quickly than Lokir. I am now being attacked by Hazel, so I guess this replay cannot end. I guess it cannot end. I guess it can't end, little puppy. Wee, little puppy. She got a bath today, and she is so soft. Are you so soft? All right, goodbye, everybody. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.